Hey there, Internet. Welcome to the Hard On Gear channel, where I discuss and review my use and abuse knives and gear. All right, so a few days ago, buddy from the uh, shacks here on base gave me this knife to take a look at and sharpen up for him. This is the Benchmade Crooked River. This is the knife I never really expected to handle anytime soon because it's not something that's been anywhere near the top of my shopping list. A little bit more of a traditional feel to it, although this one is a little more modernized with the gray and orange look to it. But I've always considered the Benchmade Crooked River to be kind of like a buck 110 had a baby with like a more modern folding knife. And uh, this one here, like I said, with the modern colors takes away some of that look. But if you look at the other models with the wood finish kind of looking G10 scales on, which these scales are G10 with like, I'm assuming just a stainless steel uh, top here, which is a little bit dentable, as you can see from Buddy's a uh, little bit of wear and tear that he's put this thing through. Uh, but yeah, stainless steel, full liners on the inside and some kind of a steel liner here on the outside and steel jumping and some kind of a, I'm assuming G10 orange backspacer in the back of the knife here, which kind of pops out a little bit with some jimping, which gives you some extra grip as well as the jimping up in the metal, uh, the liners rather kind of built in there at the top, which like most bench made jimping isn't really aggressive, but it's there. You can feel it. It doesn't really stop your hand much, and with gloves on, I don't know that you notice it at all. Typical Benchmade pocket clip here, stainless steel, able to be positioned on left or right hand. Tip up only because, you know, tip down silly. Uh, just my opinion, of course. But if you are a tip down person, that's something to consider that this is a tip up only knife, left or right. Fully ambidextrous like most Benchmades as it's got the axis lock. Although I will point out that on this lock, there is one uh, one, at one Omega spring rather currently missing. Now, buddy let me know that he got this from his dad. It was originally his knife and his father had, whether it was through dismantling it or whatever, ended up uh, losing one of the springs. He has it, it's kind of tucked away in a plastic baggie somewhere, but it's uh, still operates just fine with the one lock or the one Omega spring rather. I don't notice a huge difference in the springiness of this lock. Now, if you lose the other spring, you're running into problems and you can, as people have pointed out to me in comments, put uh, a little stick or something in there if you ever need to operate the lock, if you still had to use this knife. But it is a little concerning to me that it now only has one Omega spring, but it'll probably still hold up fine. I'll be curious to know over the time if uh, Buddy has any issues with this, but yeah, the one big concern that many hard users, myself included, have with Benchmade knives. What if the Omega springs fail? Then I've got a Benchmade knife or two of my own that I've had over the years that I've uh, just, I guess the last couple years anyways, used in the field a little bit and never really had any issues, nor have I ever, ever had any major concern of uh, the knife or the lock failing on me. But the Crooked River here is a little bit, as I just have the super freak out, let's do a little size comparisons. Uh, pretty hefty freaking knife, very sturdy. The Omega Springs, without a doubt, are the weak link of this thing from everything I can tell. Pretty thin blade stock, uh, pretty big four inch blade, over nine inches in total length. Uh, 5.4 ounces or something like that. So pretty damn heavy, not quite as heavy. Actually, I guess, yeah, I think the Cold Steel Recon 1 is just about five, maybe a little over five ounces, 5.1 ounces. So heavier than the Recon 1, could feel that as soon as I grabbed it. Pretty much twice as heavy as something like the Paramilitary 2, the Crooked River next to the Recon 1. You can see Recon 1's a huge knife, often considered to be a little bit too large for most EDC users. Crooked River is a little bit bigger than that. The mini Crooked River is probably something closer to the Manix 2 in length. I think it's just under eight inches. So if you like the looks and the, uh, let's say the overall feel and vibe of the Crooked River, but you want something a little bit smaller, the Crooked River mini, the mini Crooked River uh, is uh, probably closer to this size here. The axis lock on this, now the clip on the right makes me it makes it a little easier for me to operate the axis lock with my right hand. It gives your pinky something to rest on, as opposed to me doing it with my left hand where my pinky and ring finger are just sliding around. So while it is ambidextrous, this large crooked river, the shape of it, makes the one-handed use of the axis lock a little bit trickier. Thumb stud deployment, pretty secure, pretty safe, feels pretty, uh, pretty good. But the one-handed closing of the lock, yeah, a little awkward. And especially where, like most Benchmade locks, if you hold a lock down and swing it shut, it'll kind of bounce the blade and it won't really lock. The uh, way to properly, I guess the, not properly, but the best way, the smoothest way to close it is to depress the uh, axis lock mechanism. And, and you can do it with one hand. Like in this position, it's actually easier for me to do it with just my thumb. Do that, swing the blade shut. But as soon as you start swinging the blade shut, you release the axis lock and it should. Ooh, not enough swing there. A little more momentum trying to keep it in the frame, but... 
let the axis lock go as soon as you swing it, should land in place. But just a little axis lock trick in case anyone's new to this thing and trying to figure out how to get it to shut without getting this uh, blade bounce. You just want to do a little bit of a timing practice with the, ooh, again, trying to do it nice and slow so you can see it, but pretty much need the momentum and the uh, weight of the blade in order to get that to close all the way. And in that, saying that anyways, I say uh, one thing that the uh, fellow, the owner of this knife asked me to do was to get him, uh, or get this knife going a little bit smoother if possible. So I cleaned it out, blew it out a little bit with uh, just kind of my own breath and then uh, put some uh, frog lube in the pivot and tried to move that around a little bit and get it running as smoothly as possible. Played around with the uh, Torx head and the pivot, the T10 pivot and then uh, T6 for the body screws and the t -t -t pocket clip screws as well. So nothing off standard there. But yeah, done a little bit of adjusting very minorly since this already has been taken apart by the previous owner, so the warranty's void. So no harm to me messing around with the uh, pivot on this. It didn't really help that much. It definitely made it easier to uh, open and close the knife, but it didn't actually like make it free flowing uh, like my other Benchmades and like the 940 Dash 2 or the Benchmade Freak, which can flow pretty freely after, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks of breaking it in. It was kind of running like this. Never had to adjust the pivot. Never even really have to lube it that well to keep it moving this freely. But uh, both are around the same ballpark in price. Maybe the Freak's a little bit more expensive, but you're gonna get the Crooked River for around 270. Actually, yeah, no, pretty damn expensive. I think actually a little more expensive than the Freak right now, but about 270 American, somewhere's in that window of 260, 270, 280. And then, geez, upwards of like 350, 60, 70 bucks Canadian to get this off of most retailers currently in 2022. I'm sure these prices are going to go up with inflation and all the other stuff. I don't know what they were a few years ago, but uh, I think Nick Chavaz's video on the Crooked River year, I don't know how many years ago that was, before the, the mini one came out. And that was, I think the price was 200 US at the time, so $70 increase. So not looking like this stuff's going to get any cheaper. And Benchmade typically doesn't have the best bang for your buck com uh, compared to other knives with similar steels and materials like these guys here. Also with G10 and S30V, like this guy, but you're looking at actually the new version is S35V and on the Cold Steel Recon one, about a, maybe $70, $80 less, or actually probably $100 less. Same thing with these guys, looking at around $70, $80 minimum cheaper without the uh, beautiful Benchmade Butterfly Tax, LOL, just kidding. Uh, but they do have a typical, like maybe 10, 20% extra cost to similar knives and there doesn't really seem to be much uh, reason behind it seeing as there's some quality control issues and some uh, fragility to the Omega Springs and other issues that other knife companies don't seem to have. But that's more of an opinion piece. A lot of people hate Benchmade because of how overpriced and dainty relative to say like a ZT folder or uh, even cold steel for half the price and a lot of different stuff like that. But anyways, Benchmade Kirk of River, a few more size comparisons here. Why don't we put the big beefy SR1 light speaking of cold steel. So you're talking about a $70 knife compared to a $270 knife. Uh, as far as the American prices go, actually it might be even cheaper than that for the SR1 light, but bigger knife, cheaper knife, thicker blade stock, and probably gonna last a lot longer than the Crooked River for, yeah, way more affordable price. So just a little thought for you if you are looking for something this big and aggressive, and I'll tell you, when you kept the Crooked River in your hand, it surprised me just how large and heavy of a knife this is. Uh, doesn't necessarily need to be that heavy, I don't think. Uh, it's certainly strong, certainly sturdy. The full stainless steel liners might be a little bit of overkill. I'd like it to be maybe balanced a little bit more towards the blade and tip to get a little more cutting power, but who knows? Maybe they got that thing figured out through their own trial and error, and maybe I'm totally wrong, but I uh, think it could be a little bit lighter for what it is. Let's look at it next to the Rat Model 1 and 2. Always forever good size comparisons. There's the Rat Model 1 coming in, I think, just around 9 inches. And then the Rat Model 2, which is much more tiny. And then why don't we also look at the Delica, which is another little guy next to the... Wow. Yeah. Little guy next to the Crooked River. Uh, I don't know if there's much else to say. Oh, the sharpening and the thumb stud, which is not an abnormal thing with the thumb studs on these Benchmades. Some of them tend to poke out quite far on the blade. So if you're cutting cardboard and stuff, you almost have to drag away. You can't really cut straight down to the base of the knife because the thumb stud does get in the way of those big slicing through a lot of thick material. Now, 
probably the same with this one, although I haven't really cut too much. I did sharpen that up to make sure it was actually so terrifying. It's actually got a really good edge on it. It was a little banged up. So as you can see, there's some uh, denting and such around the front of the scales and a little bit in the uh, liners are a little bit dinged up too, actually. So there's definitely been used, definitely been banged up, probably uses a hammer a little bit by the looks of things, probably by the previous owner, but either way, the, yeah, overall the blade and stuff's in pretty good shape, but it was relatively dull, but not terribly damaged. Uh, at this point, like I said, this thing is just about as sharp yeah, let me just try and get a nice clear one for you just so you can see, because this is, yeah, that kind of sharp where I'll say, once again, that if I push too hard, I will be peeling myself on camera for, I don't know if it's your pleasure, but someone will get a kick out of it and it won't be me. But yeah, so looking pretty good. Bench me Crooked River. Yeah, there we go. A little tricky again, left hand, just because the pocket clip is on the right hand and I am a southpaw, so gotta be a little careful. I don't slip and throw this thing through a wall. Uh, yeah, when I was sharpening this thing, that's where I was going with that, I noticed very quickly that the thumb stud is in the way quite a bit. Now, when I'm doing this with the Freak, same issue, but the Freak's M4 steel, most of the time I'm just stropping it, maybe hitting it on the ceramic rods, not as big of a deal. Trying to go across the length of a stone with a thumb stud there is a bit of a pain in the butt because you really have to be careful unless you're going to miss that bottom choil where that sharpening choil, I guess if you want to call it that, just the end of the blade there, kind of uh, that last half quarter of an inch or so, it's a little hard to get to unless you angle it off. So just coming across like this, you can see that thumb stud brings it up and it's kind of almost at the right angle and I kind of used it a little bit to cheat during some of the stages, but I'm a little nervous to be a little too uh, steep on my angle and ruin that little bit of blade there. So I started like that, came around like that, didn't have any issues. I gotta be careful about running that nice sharp blade over that. I don't know why I would do that. Let's not be stupid here and make sure that didn't lose any of its beautiful sharpness. Although I didn't actually try and track the edge on there. So I think we're still good. Anyway, so I'll make sure this is zipped up perfectly for everybody before I give it back to him. Thanks for lending me this knife and allowing me to make this video. Much appreciated. Uh, let me know over time if that uh, Omega Spring ever gives out on you. I'd be very curious. And uh, I appreciate all the boys who have been hooking me up with some of their knives for doing these videos. It's one of the benefits of being in the army right now is pretty much everyone has a knife on them and they're learning really quickly. Cheap little knives don't always do the trick. And uh, some of these guys got a lot more money than they need right now. So uh, a lot of fancy knives being purchased by some of the fellows. But cool little hand-me-down from Buddy's father, the Benchmade Crooked River. It's a kind of traditional meets modern in the folding knife world. I'll, uh, yeah, probably keep an eye out for some other Benchmades that are going to be on this channel from some of these guys, as well as the future Benchmades that are going to be in my life. Big fan, as you know, of the M4 Super Freak. Been getting lots of pocket time with this guy lately. But yeah, thank you for tuning in to this video and check out some of the other videos on the, you know, the uh, Super Freak or the Cold Steel Recon One or anything else that you see on the table here. This is the Hard On Gear channel saying thanks. Oh, and hit the stupid like button. Always, if you wouldn't mind hitting that, always appreciate it. But yeah, Hard On Gear channel, signing off.